Green Spot Single Pot Irish Still Whiskey meets one of my favorite wineries in the Napa Valley, Chateau Montalena. Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Green Spot Single Pot Irish Still Whiskey. This is the Chateau Montalena cask. I already reviewed the Chateau Louisville Barton cask, so now we're going New World over to uh, the Napa Valley, specifically up to Calistoga, to Chateau Montalena. Now, before I review this whiskey, here are my notes. In 2015, the makers of Green Spot introduced an experimental finishing series called the Wine Geese, in which seven to 10 year old aged whiskey is rested an additional year or more in wine barrels from wineries founded by Irish immigrants. The first was a green spot Chateau Louisville Barton, the Bordeaux winery founded by Irish immigrant Anthony Barton. The second is the green spot Chateau Montalena single pot still Irish whiskey. Chateau Montalena was founded in 1882 by Alfred Tubbs on 254 acres of land just north of Calistoga in the Napa Valley at the foot of Mount St. Helena. In 1968, Chateau Montalena was purchased by lawyer Jim Barrett along with his partners. Jim Barrett emigrated from Waterford, Ireland to Boston in the mid 20th century. Barrett replanted the vineyard and installed winemaking equipment in the historic buildings and it began producing wines again in 1972 with Mike Gergich employed as a winemaker. Four years later, the Chateau Montalena 1973 Chardonnay won the first place among the Chardonnays and White Burgundies entered into the Judgment of Paris wine competition. Green Spot Chateau Montalena Single Pot Aristel Whiskey. It was distilled from malted and unmalted barley. It's a blend of seven to 10 year old whiskeys it's aged an additional 12 months in French oak Zinvendel cast from Chateau Montalena. It's a non-age statement. It's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume, and I paid $95 here in California. All right, so Chateau Montalena was one of the first wineries I ever visited in the Napa Valley when I moved back to the Bay Area and went up to visit wineries uh, in back in 2000 when I was first starting my wine journey before I had gone back to college to study enology and became a certified sommelier and all that. I started off in my wine journey just uh, visiting wineries. Um, I've now been to 136 wineries in the Napa Valley, and one of the very first I ever went to was Chateau Montalena, one of the most important wineries in terms of uh, history, as you saw there in the notes, uh, but also one of my favorite in terms of the quality of the wines. Now, they are known more for the Chardonnay uh, because of the Judgment of Paris, but I would say even more so when people think Chateau Montalena in terms of their modern wines, really it's Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this is the 2017 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, so the grapes are sourced from vineyards throughout the Napa Valley, and then their estate, um, a Cabernet Sauvignon, which comes from their own property there in Calistoga. Now, uh, this goes for about $50. The estate goes for about $114. When I <laughs> was thinking about do reviewing the Green Spot Chateau Montalena, I sort of assumed, because they had done Lille Barton which is a Cabernet-based wine, that they were doing a New World counterpart. And so they would do a Cabernet Sauvignon, more likely probably maybe from the estate. So I was really surprised uh, when I found out that they actually used a Zinvendel cask. Now, Zinvendel is sort of California's unofficial grape. Uh, it's, uh, the grape is actually Primitivo uh, from Italy, also known as uh, Tribadrag in Croatia. And it's a kind of an odd grape. It's uneven in its uh, size on the bunch. So you, you can have some that are ripe, some are not so ripe. And so, cause you have real large grapes, real, real small grapes. And so by the time those smaller unripe grapes get ripe, the larger grapes are really, really, really ripe. The result is higher sugar. You get more of sort of a, uh, a raisin and um, prune character out of those grapes. The wines end up having, more, because of more sugar, they have more alcohol, they end up being very jammy. No, I like Zinvendels, but, uh, and they're, they're really a unique grape. They tend to be head pruned rather than being trellised. 
uh, some of the best Zen Rindels actually, in my opinion, actually come out of Lodi and out of the Sierra Foothills. They've got vines there that are over 100 years old, still on their uh, native rootstock. Uh, they weren't planted over onto uh, another type of rootstock in order to resist um, phylloxera and really, really, really cool grapes. Anyway, so I was expecting a Cabernet Sauvignon cask for the Chateau Montalena. Was I a little disappointed? Yeah, somewhat, but I think the Zinvido cask actually works really, really well. And rather than just having another Cabernet Sauvignon cask, which would maybe end up actually duplicating what they've already done with the uh, Leo Verbotan, right? It, it might end up just tasting the same. They say it really has a really unique uh, profile. But if I'm gonna buy a bottle from Chateau Montalena, I'm gonna go Cabernet Sauvignon. Alrighty, let's get into this whiskey. First, color-wise, it is light, golden in color. I'd say more of a medium gold. On the nose, medium intense aromas of, you get apple, I get butter. It has a little bit of grapiness, almost like a chocolate covered a raisin, like a raisinette. Loads of vanilla, some baking spices, cinnamon, nutmeg. A little bit of citrus. There's sort of a a dusty, like a, like a powdered sugar character. So it reminds me of maybe if you have a, a fudge or brownies that have been uh, sprinkled with powdered sugar, get kind of that note on it. All right, on the palate. Mm. This is sweeter than the Louvo Barton. It's really, really creamy. You get a lot of vanilla, a little bit of citrus. I actually get some tropical notes. If you ever buy dried fruit, that, uh, that dehydrated fruit that also has that sort of powdered sugar on it, maybe like a dehydrated pineapple with powdered sugar on it, I get that. I do get those that chocolate note as well. It has a little bit of grapiness in there, a little bit of jamminess. That Zinvindel, um, because of the higher alcohol, high, higher sugar, and, and really, really, really intense ripeness of the grapes, they tend tends to come across very, very, very jammy. A lot of blackberry jam, maybe a little blueberry jam. And I get a little bit of that on the back end as well. Get some really nice vanilla creams. It doesn't have a huge development, but I would say a little bit more citrus and apples up front. The vanilla really kicks it in, in the middle. And I get the chocolate covered raisins on the back end with a little bit of powdered sugar. Now, I really like this whiskey. I like the Louisville Barton cask a lot, a lot more. Uh, I mean, a, significantly a, a lot more. And this is selling now for about the same price as the Louisville Barton. I used to see this, you know, I'd see it on the shelf. Oh, Chateau Montalena. But I never had bought it up because I wasn't doing uh, Irish whiskeys at the time. And it was sell for about $65. The fact that this is now going for $95 to $99 in my neighborhood, it's really jumped up. And it, it, I, I don't know why. Um, I, you can, for the same price, you can get the Louisville Baton. If you're looking to buy one or the other, I would say go with the Louisville Baton. But this is really, really, really nice. I'm gonna give this a solid 90 points, solid 90 points. It has just enough variation from the front to the middle and to the finish uh, to take me over into, you know, just hit, starting to hit that 90 point range. I like the flavors. I like that it's different than the Barton. The Barton, I got more, more intense chocolate character. This I'm getting that little bit of that uh, black fruit character on the back end, and I kinda I like that. Um, I like the vanillas, I like the creaminess, I like the texture, and it has a really good length. What would really be good to do now is do a head-to-head, -head, you know, the uh, Chateau Montalena versus the Louisville Barton, and see how they would do blind, go up against a blind. Perhaps I'll do a video. Alrighty, um, if you have not yet subscribed, you like and watch my videos, I would greatly appreciate it. if you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I go live, and if you are one of my Patreons, I want to thank you very much for joining my little group. All right, and until next time, cheers.